Uncertainty leads to significant figures. A digit that must be estimated is called uncertain. A measurement always has some degree of uncertainty. Record the certain digits and leave the first uncertain digit as an estimated number. Let's do an example. Here's an example of measurement of volume using a graduated cylinder. The volume is always read at the bottom of the liquid curve. That's called the meniscus. It's represented here by the red arrow. You'll notice in the graduated cylinder, the liquid forms a curve. We read the bottom of the curve. The cylinder measures milliliters. You see one, two, and three. Notice each milliliter is divided up into tenths. You'll notice 0.5 with the long line in between three and two. The bottom of the meniscus can be read just over 2.6 milliliters, and that's a value that we're certain of. However, the meniscus is right between 2.6 and 2.7. So our certain digits are 2.6. Because the meniscus is between 2.6 and 2.7, we can have an estimated value of 0.5. If the meniscus is sitting on a line, we could have estimated 0.0. But because it's just slightly over 0.6, we'll give an estimated value of 0.05. The meniscus of the liquid occurs at about 2.65. So notice how measurements always have some uncertainty. This leads us to significant figures. Significant figure rules. Non-zero integers are always significant. These are values 1 through 9. The trick is to identify if the zeros are significant. There are three kinds of zeros leading zeros, captive zeros, and trailing zeros. Leading zeros are not significant. Captive zeros are always significant. Trailing zeros are always significant only if the number contains a decimal point. Exact numbers are significant. Exact numbers are definitions or numbers that can be counted directly. Here are some examples. 25. 25 has two non-zero integers. Therefore, there are two significant figures. 250 has a number 2 and number 5. So there are two significant figures. There's also a 0. We have to determine if the zero is significant or not. The zero is a trailing zero. It's a zero that's on the right side of non-zero integers at the end of the number. Notice that trailing zeros are significant only if a decimal is present. In this case, no decimal is present. So 250 has two significant figures. What about 250 with a decimal point. As you can imagine, 2 and 5 are significant, and the trailing 0 is significant now because there's a decimal place. So there are three significant figures. What about 0 0.00250? Here, you'll see there are leading zeros. Those are zeros that are in front of non-zero integers on the left side of our number. The zero in front of the decimal place and the two zeros after the decimal place are considered leading zeros. Those three zeros are not significant. Two and five are significant. And again, you'll notice a zero at the end of the number, a trailing zero. That number is significant if there's a decimal place 
And of course, here in this number, there is a decimal place. So there are three significant figures. Finally, 205. Here, we'll see a zero that is captive. That means the zero is sandwiched in between two non-zero integers. 205 has three significant figures. Now that we know significant figures, let's do some calculations with significant figures. Now there's some rules for calculations. For multiplication and division, the number of significant figures in the result is the same as the number of significant figures in the least precise measurement. In other words, when we multiply and divide, we want our answer to have the fewest number of significant figures. The least precise measurement has the fewest number of significant figures. You'll see in the two examples here, 1.342 times 5.5, 5.5 is our limiting value. It has the fewest number of significant figures. In the second example, 1.4 times 4.56, 1.4 is our limiting value. It has two significant figures, the fewest significant figures. So in each example, our answer should have two significant figures. Now let's do the calculations. In the first example, the answer is 7.381. Of course, this is not what we would answer or report. We want only two significant figures. So we can count 7.3, that's two significant figures. And then we'll use the next number, 8, to tell us whether to round up or not. The rule is any value 5 or greater will round up. So 7.3 gets rounded up to 7.4, and our answer has two significant figures. In our second example, our answer is 6.38. Again, 6.3 is two significant figures. The 8 tells us to round up. 6.3 gets rounded up to 6.4. 6.4 has two significant figures. For addition and subtraction, the result has the same number of decimal places as the least precise measurement. Big difference compared to multiplication and division. Here, we want the fewest decimal places. Our least precise measurement will have the fewest decimal places. In our example, 23.445 plus 7.83, our least precise measurement is 7.83. It has fewest decimal places. Our answer, 31.275, should have two decimal places. 31.27 has two decimal places, and the 5 tells us to round up. Our answer is 31.28.